A Minecraft clone is this sort of test that I give myself every once in a while to see how good I am at programming. I've never gotten that far before with the best thing I made just being a bunch of default cube instantiated on the scene, but this time I'm gonna do it for real. The first step to making any procedural mesh is to make a triangle. This isn't super difficult since I have my reference script. There it is, we got a triangle. Beautiful. Making a square is as easy as adding a second triangle. It's really hard to mess this one up. Look at- oh boy. <laughs> that- something ain't right here. This is a little wonky. Uh, there we go. Yes, it's a square. Beautiful. You know what we can do? We can add textures to this square. Well, why does it look like that? I, you know what? I'm not gonna question these things. Yeah, look at that. It's beautiful. Now this is a little more difficult since we have to deal with directions. To help me out, I made a little diagram of a cube. Look, I, I didn't have Photoshop on this laptop, okay? Let's say we have like a triangle, right? Or like if you're making a face, and you got like this kind of a thing going on, right? You got like a zero, one, two, three. When you define a triangle, you have to do... You would like to define them, because you use just kind of a ring or like an array like that. So you have to make sure it's going clockwise, like the order of it. So past me doesn't know how to explain things, so let me clear this up to you. Each face has four vertices, which are just points. To actually use these vertices, we need to define triangles. This is done by using a list of vertex indices. Every three vertices in this list is a triangle. So to define a triangle, we go from zero to two to one. So this looks like this. Unity only renders triangles going clockwise, which is why we have to go to the top one before the right one. So in this case, we have 0, 2, 1, which is indeed clockwise. So this side will render this face, but if you look at it from the other side, it's going counterclockwise and therefore will not render. So to complete this face, we just had to add a second triangle going from 1 to 2 to 3. And that you just put right in this list like this. And with that, all I had to do is figure out the correct direction for the faces. Oh, I forgot to face the other one. Or fix the other one. However, that does seem to be working, but there is a face missing. Um, so now we have two triangles that are just aren't, aren't there anymore. Hey, And now we have a cube. And that's great because as you know, Minecraft is made out of cubes, right? Wrong. Minecraft will just split into chunks, not individual cubes. But these chunks are made out of cubes, right? Well, not exactly. If we were to make chunks out of cubes, it would be highly inefficient. In this diagram here, we have a 2x2x2 two by two by two cube of cubes. As you can see here, there are many faces that aren't visible, but are still being rendered. If you expand this across multiple chunks, you will start to get very laggy. So instead of creating cubes, we create cube faces, which are squares. We only create squares at faces that are touching air or a transparent block. This way, we have significantly less squares to render. These faces get combined together to create some abstract shape that the chunk forms. What shape is this? nothing. And so, since the biggest shape we are making this out of is a square, Minecraft is made out of squares. Technically though, everything is made out of triangles. Your life is a lie. To start making chunks, it's as easy as putting a bunch of our cubes together. And that's great. However, we are still generating a lot of unnecessary faces. To get rid of these extra faces, we first need to store what blocks are in the chunk. Then when we're generating the cube, we can simply check the bordering block and see if it's solid. Then if the neighboring block is solid, we can simply just not render that face. And now we're only generating the visible faces. Now that we have one chunk, we can make more chunks. This is as simple as creating multiple chunk objects. We'll be doing this by using a new script that I call world. And with that, we have multiple chunks. But once again, we're generating unnecessary faces. So this is a pretty common theme when making a Minecraft clone. This is a little bit harder to fix than just removing faces from a chunk. In this case, we have to check with the world script to determine if there is a neighboring chunk and then get that neighboring chunk to check its neighboring block. It's easier than it sounds though. And now we are once again only generating the necessary faces. I promise this is the last time we have to do this for now. So far, we've simply been checking whether or not a block in a chunk is solid, but if we want to make Minecraft, we're going to need more than just one block. So, I created a block script and a block database. Each block has an ID. Since we're already using integers in the chunk data, we can just modify it to use any block ID instead of just 0 and 1. And with that, we now have the classic Minecraft blocks, the 0 block and the 1 block. Most of the basic terrain systems are done now, so we can start working on some more advanced stuff. Obviously, Minecraft worlds aren't a series of random blocks, so we need to add some more believable terrain generation. To do this, we're going to use Perlin Noise. 
For right now, I'm simply using Unity's built-in noise function. I multiply it by an amplitude value to get different heights and then use that when generating chunks. I move chunk generation into the world script instead of the chunk script as well. Just kind of expected this, but yeah, it's just uh, beautiful. <laughs> so now it's still flat. Well, now we're on the same one layer, so that's good, but uh, this is still just completely flat. Okay, there we go. That's, that's, uh... yeah, look at that smooth terrain that is beautiful uh that being said it, it looks it's definitely repeating <laughs> for some reason i kept forgetting to add the chunk position to the generation meaning every chunk was the same that's what caused the multiple chunk layers as well as the repetition also it was like two in the morning at this point so my voice is dead so sorry about that there we go now it's not repeating itself anymore and now it's finally working correctly however these zero and one blocks are hard to look at so i decided to actually add dirt and grass textures now unity uses texture coordinates when deciding which texture to use for a face for of a mesh because of this we need all of our textures in one sprite this is easy to manage but all of minecraft's textures are separate the problem with this is that on my laptop the only image editing program I have is MS Paint, so I didn't really have anything to combine textures with. I didn't feel like using some Photoshop alternative or downloading Photoshop or any easy solution like that, so I did the much longer and much harder thing and created a resource loader. I first created a scriptable object for the blocks and gave them all textures. Then I created a resource loader method that gets all of the sprites from the blocks and combines them into one sprite map. Then it creates a block object that we were using for the world generation and tells it the correct texture coordinates to use. Oh boy, that's definitely not right. <laughs> Yay, it worked. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this normal map now. <laughs> so as long as you don't look at the top, look at that, it looks beautiful. Uh, and it looks a little bit less beautiful <laughs> here, but that's not important. Okay, so now I know it's gray, it's not supposed to be great, but that's okay because I, I can't change it. This took me like an hour, but it's working now. This will make my life so much easier in the future. And now we have actual Minecraft blocks instead of numbers. Just ignore the fact that the grass is gray at the top. The next day, I fixed the grass texture. However, OBS seems to hate it. Then I started working on dynamic terrain generation. For some reason though, I didn't record any clips of me actually programming this. The concept is simple though. When you move, it loads chunks around you. Yeah, I don't know what I was doing when recording this because there's no more dynamic generation clips after this one. It wasn't even working properly in this clip. I do know that I got it working properly, but it was so laggy that I cut it for the time being. Because while making this, I came up with an idea that will completely change everything and take this game to a whole new level. However, it's way too big of a project for this video, so I cut out the dynamic generation and started working on trees. Getting the tree position generation was difficult. First, everything was tree. Then there were layers of just logs. Now it's just one layer of logs. It's an improvement, I guess. And now there's, uh, this. <laughs> Everything's wood now. Okay, there's slightly less wood now. We're getting there and it's all gone. And now we're getting bands of trees. What, what is even happening here? We just keep going backwards. It took a while, but eventually I got to a point where I was happy with the tree placement. Tree generation is more complicated than you would think. We have tree position generating, great. Now we can set one pillar of tree. However, the problem is the leaves around the tree. Because of chunk borders, we can't just set the blocks around the trees to leaves, as this could interfere with already existing chunks. So because of this, we need to detect if a block is a leaf or a tree for each and every block. I didn't really know how to do this, so I went with quite possibly the most inefficient method possible, checking each possible combination of tree positions for each block. I started adding the leaves, but this creates a new problem, transparency. I, I fixed this by making the material transparent, and that works for the leaves. However, this creates a new issue, w whatever this is. Thanks, Unity. I have no idea what's causing this, and it doesn't seem like people on the internet know either. So the workaround solution is just to use two different mesh layers, one for solid textures and one for transparent textures. And now it all looks normal again. Now all I had to do was actually build the trees. However, this method of tree generation is very slow, and generating these chunks takes almost three minutes now. But hey, it's working and that's all I care about right now. Ignore the fact that the leaves are white, I, I forgot to fix that. I added caves, which is the same as surface generation but with 3D noise that I copy pasted from the internet. So that looks good. I can apply this to ore generation as well, so now we have ore. I copied a character controller script from a previous project because I didn't feel like making it again. And now, it's time for player interaction. Right now, player interaction consists of breaking and placing blocks. To do this, I use a raycast and then use the world and chunk scripts to determine what block is clicked. Then it simply sets the block to air and reloads the chunks. So now blocks get destroyed when you click them. However, we're now having a new issue. Our old errors arch nemesis, not enough faces. 
This is because when we break a block bordering another trunk, that trunk never gets reloaded, so it still thinks there's a block next to it. To fix this, we simply reload that neighboring trunk as well. And now it works properly no matter where you break blocks. Placing blocks is pretty similar to breaking blocks. It's just the opposite. So I wasn't that hard to implement, except that I'm bad at programming and there are so many errors, but that's not important. And now you can place blocks just fine for the most part. And that's where I'm going to leave it for now. I didn't get done nearly as much as I had planned for this video, but that big idea I was talking about earlier is going to take a while and I wanted to get this video out. There will be a sequel to this video at some point, but probably not very soon because I started working on that big change and oh boy, is it difficult. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video where we make this thing better. If I can even get it to work. That's all for now. Goodbye.